Hello all together, ladies and gentlemen. My first advice to everybody is move to the front rows because we will show before and after pictures and uh, it's much better to sit uh, in the front rows. You will have more insights uh, than if you're sitting in one of the, the rows behind. So everybody just come and uh, move to the uh, front side. So, before we go into this uh, program, um, I would like to thank two esteemed doctors to join us. Uh, let me start with uh, Dieter Manstein, who is uh, one of the co-founders. Actually, the two of us, we founded uh, GME many years ago. And uh, Dieter is known for his work on fractional treatments. And today we are showing you a new concept called fractional vascular treatment, which uh, you may not have heard, um, which is not a surprise because it's new. And uh, we show you some insights that we develop uh, on the theoretical side about the concept, that's uh, Dieter's uh, presentation. But we also test it very extensively on the clinical side. And I'm very happy that uh, Professor Engin Caesar from Turkey uh, made it to uh, uh, the Imcas to Paris, and he will share insights with you both on uh, treatments of rosacea as well as some very difficult and interesting cases. So uh, everybody who's interested in lasers uh, will find some new insights today. Uh, if not, I will pay a drink. <laughs> so <laughs> it is new. So, what we will do is, uh, I will give you a short introduction about uh, GME, where we're coming from, for those who do not know us. And then I will uh, pass uh, the podium to uh, Dieter, who will show um, his insights about the new fractional vascular treatment. And then uh, Dr. Engin will show his results on the vascular side. Afterwards, we have a short break. And then, stay, don't move. There come, will be some very interesting cases that are not vascular, but some other indications that we treated with a combination of yellow laser 577 and non-ablative fraction laser 1550. Afterwards, we will have a final discussion and some hands-on uh, uh, training at the device, uh, which you will find to my right side and to your left side. So a few words about GME. What is our mission? So we are a company specialized on medical equipment, medical lasers, and we want to develop devices for experts, and those devices are created by experts. So um, all of us have worked in the industry for many years, and we created this company about 10 years ago. So uh, myself, I worked for a company called Contel and Wavelight. So did my uh, colleague Dieter. And I don't think I have to introduce Dieter Manstein uh, for that. He's uh, very famous and well known for his uh, groundbreaking work on fractional treatment and cryolipothesis. We also have a partner from uh, South Korea, Dr. Wu Sok Ko, um, who is uh, very well known in Asia and a very experienced dermatologist. The, the fifth one is uh, somebody who's experienced in the field of industrial lasers. So we have the chance to always get the latest technology, even if it's not yet in dermatology, so we can get those technologies. Today we talk about the Flexis, this machine here. And the name Flexis stands for flexible system. What do we mean with that? So flexible system means you can make a configuration of the device that is fitting to your needs. And you have many options. So the one that we will talk most today is the 577, the yellow laser, which you can add. Then you can add a 1550 non-ablative fractional laser. And you can also add um, the 308 excimer lamp, either as an excimer system or an LED system. So you have three wavelengths in one device. You could also work with a green laser instead of the yellow laser, but uh, today we will focus 
on the yellow laser as it is giving some very interesting results. Okay, so this was my introduction about GME and, um, and the flexes, and I'm now very glad to hand over to Dieter and his discussion on uh, the new treatment. Yeah, <clears throat> thank you, Stefan. It's a um, pleasure being here and also working with you. It um, has been quite some time, and just for my disclosures, as Stefan mentioned, I'm a um, couple of um, um, disclosures, but mainly for this talk relevant, I'm co-founder of GME, German Medical Engineering. And it's really like um, a, a lot of fun also to work with you because with all this, uh, so I, just to, to say I have different hats on, so my main role is I have my own translational research laboratory at Mass General Hospital uh, where we um, do the more basic research, but then it's also um, fun to work with uh, one or two startup companies. Actually, it's, uh, the other one is Esplosm Innovations, and it's really like great to have discussions and, and, and give some advice. And coming up in, as a result of these discussions with some, some really uh, new um, um, uh, treatment algorithms. And uh, one of those is um, um, yeah, the flexes, but one thing I just wanted to say, don't be fooled by the small size. It's actually, you, you may know this, big um, closets and, and room filling devices, uh, ruby laser and, and hair removal lasers, a copper vapor laser, which is a 578 laser, which, which um, was actually a very good device. Um, but one of the reasons why you pretty much don't see it anymore, you, you had to hire a technician and you had to build an extra room to, to have the supply unit for the laser. Um, so, just like to use this opportunity also, not just talk about this device, just I wanted to share with you also um, briefly a couple of slides, just, just some, the big picture basically, a little bit of laser history. And I think since the laser was invented basically, as early like in this book of 1971, uh, Clinicians always tried to use it for many things, to remove um, port wine stains, to, uh, to remove tattoos and, and hairs. And some of that worked pretty well, and sometimes early on specifically, you cause a lot of scarring also. And, um, but it's always the same, you wanted to, whatever you didn't like, you wanted to destroy, basically, remove unwanted hair, unwanted pigmented lesions, unwanted vessels. It's just selectively destroying it. And really like one of the groundbreaking um, theories behind that was um, published by my, um, by my mentor, Rock Sanderson, together with John Paris, 1983, selective photothermolysis. Basically, he taught us all how to use a laser to selectively and not just burn off um, um, unwanted targets. So basically, in essence, what it says, you have to select the right wavelength to, depending which chromophore you have to choose, and match the pulse duration to the diameter of the target, and then go as high as you can uh, in order to, uh, to have um, good effects on the, the targets. And that's since 1988 three were some of the gold standards in, um, in laser therapy. So that's basically how it works. You have a deep lying target like a vessel, you apply uh, some pulse, and because selectively absorbed, you, you heat the, um, the vessels. And here with pulse dye lasers, um, that was for many years the, the gold standard for treatment, for example, of port wine stains. You see the purpura, basically selective damaging through the skin of the vessels and the vessel disappeared. And also with, um, you can use all selective photothermolysis to have epidermal uh, pigment removed, uh, cures it um, a vascul vascular, uh, not vascular, pigment absorbed wavelength, um, but also IPL, filtered IPL were many times used to do these lesions. 
However, there's one problem. Um, when you use an IPL and try so a large spot size to selectively remove the pigment, well, if you have light skin and really dark uh, one, it's very, it's easy, basically. But if you have a low contrast lesion, so like just a little bit um, of more pigment or darker skin, it's difficult to get the threshold exactly right with selective photothermalizers sometimes. And if you're above and have a large spot size, then you have a problem. And because you can have these footprints, hypopigmentation, and PIH, in worst case, even, even scarring. So there are some challenges uh, with selective photothermalysis sometimes also. And another problem uh, with, with these kind of treatments is also when you use, for example, this is an um, example which um, uh, I experienced myself, basically, with an IPL. You, you treat this one patient, and you see it's, it's barely visible, just a slight gradient of pigmentation. And uh, when you treat with an IPL, with every pulse you see here, was the same setting. But and it, it's, if you measure the pigmentation, it's just less than 10% different between the lower part and the, the, the higher part um, of the leg. But you have a very sharp threshold, and all of a sudden, if it's just a little bit above, you get this, um, this really like dramatic um, and unwanted side effects. So it's just a little bit of a teaser. Well, if you have large spot size, that's a problem. Well, if you would do this in a fractionated way, that may be different. So let me just show you a few more. So this is one of, so I had the pleasure also to, to, to work with, uh, with rocks at the Berman. And now, 20 years ago, actually, it was 2004, uh, we published the first and, and conceived and fractional photothermalysis. And basically, at that time, everybody tried to make homogeneous exposures, but we tried to do the opposite. Um, really, really small spots, basically. And we, we called it fractional photothermalysis. Um, and it became actually very popular. Initially, it was just uh, we wanted to use it for, for photo aging and having fast recovery. Um, but it's used for many things, and, and new indications, like we also will later hear today, are still after 20 years being established, and new modification of fractional um, are becoming used. So even after 20 years, fractional photothermalysis, which we've introduced 20 years ago, is still a very hot topic. It's established, but still hot and emerging at the same time, which I found quite surprising after 20 years. Um, so we know that the size really matters. If you do a large injury, it, you get scarring. If you do a small spot, even you, you also completely cook and fry it in a small area, it heals very nice and you get um, repair. So the indications typically with classical fractional applications where you use a water-absorbed wavelength, so no selective photothermalysis, water-absorbed, infrared-absorbed, uh, you get something like normalization. So initially it was used for treatment of collagen, hypertrophic scarring, you, it, it, you do a fractional treatment, it gets less, atrophic scarring, you do a treatment, you stimulate collagen, it, 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 it gets up, basically you get more. It's somehow actually magical, the self-regulating effects of fractional photothermalysis. And uh, pigmentation, you can remove pigment, even if it's not a pigment-selective wavelength. And you can also stimulate, and uh, um, we'll later on we'll show, see some images also, where fractional treatment in combination with something facilitate the uh, repigmentation um, of vitiligo, basically, also. Um, vascularity, typically, it's done with selective photothermalysis, that's the goal, but also, but if you use um, fractional treatments 
water absorbed wavelengths with quite high energies, you can do also point welding, but just some, so on the right side it was with fractional with uh, high, high energies it was done. Anyway, the point I wanted to make, fractional is after 20 years still very popular. You can treat collagen, you can treat pigment, and you can treat uh, blood vessels with fractional um, that was known. But you can probably do it even better also, because what I'm showing you here are only um, using water-absorbed wavelength. That's how we started, because it was water-absorbed wavelength to make independent of pigmentation these kind of small microscopic thermal damage zones. Um, but so far, really, nobody has combined um, selective and fractional photothermalysis. So it's either you use a large spot, typically um, selectively absorbed laser, or you have a small, focused, water-absorbed spot. But the idea of combining both basic selective absorption with a small spot is in some way, I would say it's a little bit uh, not the, the typical paradigm, basically, but it makes quite a bit of sense, as you will see, for certain indications. So what is a flexis? Just very briefly, it's a flexible laser system where you can simultaneously have two different complete modules, and you can combine them as much as I know as, as you like, um, but up to two in one device. So my favorite, but it's, it depends on the um, patient population, so I like the combination of a fraction laser, then you can do the 50 and 50. In combin uh, then you can do with that all what we know with classical fractal laser treatments, it's very similar, it's uh, um, uh, all the, the indication of classical fractional laser treatments. But also, the, I think today, I'd like to bring your attention to the 577 nanometer, uh, which is um, a yellow laser, which is a diet laser, very low um, in maintenance, very small, but still quite powerful, and will allow um, selective treatment also of vessels um, and opens up additional indications. Here are the technical specs, the 1515 nanometer, the typical fractional laser, but the 577 on the right side is used in a fractional matter basically. So the spot size, um, so I'd like to, not sure if I can, do I have a pointer here? Ah, okay. Oh. So you have to point to the screen, not to the... Um, <laughs> you see the, sp the spot size, and there are two, you can have either a scanning device attached, and it's 0.7 millimeters, so 700 micrometer, or you have just a um, pointing handpiece, uh, it's one millimeter, basically. And that gives you uh, quite high fluences, basically. So we're talking from fluences within the individual spot um, of four to up to 100 joule per square centimeter. Typically, we use like 20 to 30 joules per square centimeter, which is the fluence within each MTZ, basically. So if you compare that with typical pulse dilator treatment, it's, it's quite high, basically. Uh, and you would never do that with a large spot size, um, but because it's small, even if you would be above the um, damage threshold, it still heals uh, nice and quickly as a fractional laser. Um, so here, let's a few slides about the 1515 as a no classical non-ablative laser. It can be combined with a cooling unit. Then um, uh, you have better, um, which has some advantages also, and as we know, Cooling can reduce, uh, can enhance com comfort. 
and these are the classical non-ablative fraction laser um, indications. Um, just some, some examples here. Um, but there, there is 10% coverage and 40 millijoule um, in, in this um, example here has a, uh, was used clinically. And you see, like we all know, um, with frax, fractional lasers, very good remodeling of scars, basically. And uh, that's with a 15-15 nanometer handpiece. So nothing um, completely innovative because it's part of the fractional concept, but it's good to have a very powerful fractional laser built in as one of the four options that comes with the device, basically. So you don't have to get a really <coughs> expensive standalone fractional uh, non-ablative unit. It's already part of the system, basically. But then you can add um, the 577 and the vascular indications. Um, it's a yellow laser, 577. And there you can um, also treat um, vascular lesions and uh, also pigmented lesions. And let me explain how you can do both at the same time, but I wanted to focus on the vascular lesions. Uh, you see the spot size is 0.7 millimeter and uh, one millimeter. And it comes with two, um, with the, with the um, two handpieces, the pointing handpiece and the scanning handpiece also. So if you look to the absorption band, they will note, you will notice that, that you have the classical um, pulse um, dye laser um, at 585. That's the orange band. And you see that for 577, which is a yellow one, there is a maximum um, absorption at the oxyhemoglobin for, for basically capillaries and fine red blood vessels. It gives you the absolute highest absorption. And um, it's really like down to a couple of uh, nanometers, basically. Really the peak absorption for oxygenated hemoglobin. Um, and if you consider that the absorption of melanin is relatively flat, it gives you the really, you can say it's the most selective wavelength uh, for treatment of oxygenated blood, basically. Um, so we then um, basically, and uh, Dr. Caesar will also ex show you more clinical um, pictures. I would just like to explain you the concept. So instead of using a large spot, only 30% with a small uh, 07 millimeter handpiece is treated, and we can have much higher fluences. Uh, but interestingly, it's, it's probably also like point welding, even you treat not the entire area, you have a homogeneous improvement of the vessels, basically. Um, what I wanted to, to mention also, and this from another paper we have published, when you do this, it's important not to compress the blood vessels. So this is some, another publication where we've used OCT imaging uh, to see how the vascularity changes if you compress it, basically. Um, compress the skin. So you will, um, this is with OCT, vascular OCT, you see the, within the papillary dermis, the, um, the vessels, um, no compression. If you compress it, there are no blood vessels, meaning no chromophore. And interesting, if you let go then, then the blood vessels coming back, sometimes even more than before. So if you compress and let go, then you have more blood vessels, or if you cause any kind of other stimulation. What that means is you should not combine vascular treatment with um, contact cooling, because then you have compression, basically. And when you compress, no, no um, uh, good effects on specifically the fine blood vessels. And um, basically, that's also a way how you can, um, so, and also a similar effect has also cooling. While cooling is good to reduce um, some discomfort, but if you have cooling, 
the blood vessels can also contract, basically. And we will later on see some techniques um, that cooling is really not necessary and even has some, some advantages not to cool if you go for vascular lesions with a fractional laser, basically. Here are some examples. So it's specifically the, the very fine superficial vessels um, and which are very nicely um, responding to the um, um, 577 yellow laser. And remember also, you could say you could do it also with a pulse dye laser. Well, then you have the purpura. There is no purpura when you do this. There is no scabbing. Um, it's just a very smooth uh, reduction of the redness of the um, superficial vessels. And <clears throat> also what is somehow difficult to treat, just some very diffuse erythema. And again, we see much more clinical images, just like to, for illustration purposes, show you the effects of the um, 577 highly selective um, um, yellow laser. And there is also, if you, um, because you have it in the same device, you can combine the 1515 regular fractional, la fra fractional laser with the vascular selective fractional laser, then you get even more marked effects. But I don't want to take uh, the clinical pictures away. They will be presented after me. So really like in this device, you have two frac complete uh, fractional treatment modalities, um, one with a water-absorbed wavelength, 1550, which is equivalent to the regular high-end uh, fractional, um, typically remodeling laser, but also in addition, you have the opportunity to do a 577 vascular selective vascul um, vascular fractional treatment, and th that's quite unique. And think also what it could mean, for example, because we all know, and sometimes we are torn apart, basically, if you have early scars, um, the pulse dye laser is really an excellent tool when it's still red for an early um, scar to treat. Uh, and then later on, a fractional laser um, to, to enhance the scar remodeling. But now we have both, the best of both worlds, so you don't have to decide, do you use the pulse dye laser, do I do? You can treat both, and you can really get excel, excellent results on an, on an early scar that pretty much uh, completely uh, resolved. So it's really like, and even if you have a small device, you, both, both are included. And now, this I wanted to show you also what the disadvantage of a large spot size is, because I showed you this picture before, if you have a large spot size, if you're above the threshold of selectivity, you get this catastrophic side effects, which take a lot of time. On the right side, and this is really, really very high energy, on the Flexus device, you see this little dotted area. That's not what you typically see. You see this here, this is a little sprinkles. This is epidermal crossing with really like high uh, 577 energy, way more as you typically get. So you don't typically get this crusting. Um, but I want to show you to, to that even you get this, this heals nicely. While on the left side, boy, and everybody who worked with IPL knows Nine it, it goes well, but then the, pa the, the patient goes on summer vacation, and when you get this, you know you have a headache, basically. Even you or your assistant overtreats with a fractional vascular selective laser, you don't ha never have this headache, even if you cause epidermal injury, because it's a fractional injury, and it feels fine. Heals fine. Um, so, on the left side, I would have a couple of sleepless nights with a large IPL device. On the right side, hey, 
Here is also, it's, it heals fine, no worries. Um, maybe the skin gets a little bit lighter, diffusely lighter than I wanted to have, but it's all good. And then um, basically, uh, for diffuse, specifically, um, I think for diffuse redness, um, the 577 is a wonderful laser. Uh, everything that's small and superficial. I have to say for, for really the deep port wine stains, it's, it's not as effective as a classical pulse dye laser. So if you have really a lot of um, port wine stain laser patients, you still would need probably a pulse dye laser. But for the typical patients who would like to have uh, some remodeling, has some diffuse redness, some dyschromia, it's just perfect, basically, without any risk of sleepless nights. Also, what I'm really like excited, because with regular frax fraxal treatment, the treatment of melasma, we were all very excited in the past, but then with a the classical 1550 frac uh, fraxal laser treatment, uh, it really, because as it, it, you have some non-responders, sometimes it gets back worse, but what um, Dr. Cesar is also showing that when you treat the vascular component of a melasma, uh, you basically starve the melasma um, away, and you don't get, and it appears to be, that we hopefully have right now a, a higher response rate and more longer-lasting response rate by not targeting the pigment within melasma, but with this vascular selective laser, fractional laser, to um, remove the fine vascularity that feeds the melasma. So I put a question mark because we don't know. It's still early in the game. It's, um, you know, with, with, with melasma can be still some surprise, but that would be one of the most exciting new applications, that finally we may have a gentle and long-lasting treatment by vascular selective treatment, melasma, um, and that would be really exciting, basically. And then the combination therapies, we will see it in the next um, talk also, and I would like to thank you with that. Uh, <clears throat> I'm Dr. Engin Cesar from Turkey. Uh, actually, my interest in uh, dermatology is dermatopathology, which I studied in, abroad in UK and uh, USA. Uh, but, you know, uh, as a dermatologist, uh, we have to treat some uh, skin disorders as well, and we also do some uh, rejuvenation or other treatments. And by the way, I'm grateful to uh, Dr. Stefan Schulze uh, for uh, his kind invitation for this lovely Congress and to Paris, and it, it was an honor this morning to meet with uh, Dr. Manstein uh, uh, and to know him personally. Uh, so, uh, uh, so there are some conditions that we have to treat, like the active acne, uh, like the acne scars, uh, like the melasmas uh, or the rosacea. Uh, so. Uh, uh, the, the topical or the systemic treatments do not work every time. So this is why, uh, as a dermatologist, we have to use uh, these uh, lasers for medical issues and for uh, also for aesthetic issues as well. Uh, so the advantage of uh, 577 uh, is that uh, you can feel that, uh, so, so it's just for one year that I start uh, studying with the device, uh, having my clinical patients. Uh, and I feel myself very safe, because you know that you can see some tiny black dots, like, uh, uh, like crustings, but, uh, but you will know that uh, they will peel off over time, and the percentage of uh, developing these crusts are maybe 5% to 10%, and the erythema, uh, the redness disappears over one day time, and there is no bruising, and uh, I treated maybe more than 300 cases. Uh, without a single case of uh, post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation or post-inflammatory uh, uh, hyper or hypopigmentation or, or any scarring. So that's, that's important. Even in uh, higher uh, skinned individuals like Fitzpatrick uh, Phenotype 4. So 
uh, this is the procedure uh, using the hands piece, and I will uh, show the scanner mode as well. The point is that uh, with this device, uh, we do not use a plate, because if we use a plate, then we will make a pressure on the skin, is how uh, Professor Manstein mentioned, uh, so we can make these blood vessels uh, constrict. So uh, the chromophore will get affected, and uh, so we will have a lesser uh, clinical uh, outcome. So this is one of my case uh, of larger vessels uh, on the... Um, nose, uh, thicker than 300 nanometers. And just even after the treatment, you can see uh, how we get a nice result after. And uh, this treatment may be repeated as well. So no uh, risk of hyperpigmentation, no, no risk of hypopigmentation. When we use the hand piece, it's just a one millimeter uh, spot size. Uh, so we just simply fall off uh, the vessel uh, and uh, there's almost no pain. Yes, I know, with the scanner, uh, I do not uh, personally use the cooling air or any cooling device. Uh, so just to make uh, the procedure more comfortable, uh, I use the uh, anesthetic cream. Plus, uh, I'm going to show the video at the end of the session. I also use this vibrating tool together. So this is another case, and we can see that. Yes. <clears throat> Uh, the dilated vessels uh, on the sides of the nose uh, almost disappears uh, in a very nice way. So actually, this is a case of mine. Uh, the patient is a doctor as well, a physician, uh, and she was treated with, a, uh, with an NDIAC laser, 1064 nanometers, and you can see that scarring there and the persis persistent telangiectasias. Yes, so, sorry, I think. I think there's some technical... I think so. Uh, whatever. Uh, so, so we can see that uh, we can treat these uh, dilated telangiectasias uh, efficiently without uh, causing any scarring. Yes, the scar was related to a previous uh, application of uh, NDIAC laser. I just want to clarify, the white spot you see on the right half, that... Mm, I think here. Uh, yes. This was by a near the MIAC laser um, treatment prior with another device. And this is after, uh, immediately after uh, clinical picture. Uh, and we can see this, uh, the clinical outcome of uh, the vessels. So how do we treat uh, the lesions with 577 nanometer laser? We can either use 30% uh, or 40% uh, coverage uh, without cooling and using only a thin layer of ultrasound gel. Or uh, either we can use a cooling, which I do not prefer personally actually, and we can increase the co uh, coverage up to uh, 80%. And here is, uh, here is the clinical outcome uh, of a patient of mine, and she was very unhappy because of this diffuse, very severe uh, erythema telangiectatic rosacea. And you see, uh, after one session, uh, the scores are decreased, and after two, two sessions, we can achieve, uh, we can see the uh, clinical results well. So this is an interesting case, uh, case and maybe we can publish this, uh, uh, this phenomenon. Uh, because the lady uh, had uh, erythema telangiectatic rosacea uh, with grade 2 rosacea as well, because uh, the lesions also showed some popular uh, components. And uh, also, uh, the patient also had some senile comedons on the malar region. And so I didn't treat the patient for these senile uh, comedons, but I just started the treatments uh, for the rosacea, and what I see is that uh, uh, the, the scenario comedens almost completely uh, resolved after the treatment. And we can see the uh, clinical improvements of the um, telangiectatic and uh, grade 2 rosacea. So this is a patient of mine, another patient of mine. Uh, and uh, the patient was previously treated with different medications. Uh, this is a grade 2 rosacea, uh, and the dermoscopy highlighted uh, many... Uh, uh, you know, these uh, demodex folliculorum mites uh, and uh, the oral antibiotics or topical 
pimecrolimus was not effective for the patient. So, uh, so there, there are publications about uh, the efficacy of the uh, 577 laser on erythematous injected rosacea as well as the grade 2 uh, inflammatory rosacea. So I started the treatment, uh, and after three sessions, uh, we can see the marked uh, improvements, uh, near complete resolution of the lesions. Uh, and there's also one paper about uh, the efficacy of uh, 577 uh, laser uh, on the treatment of demodex follicular mites. And uh, with that paper, uh, the authors highlighted more than 50% of decrease of the uh, demodex population. Uh, so uh, this is a clinical result uh, of a friend of mine from India. Uh, the settings are around uh, 18 joules per centimeter square, but I uh, mostly prefer 22 joules per centimeter square. Uh, I uh, use 7 millimeter times 7 millimeter scanner uh, size uh, with 30 percent density or 40 percent density. And the treatment uh, is completed for the face around 20 minutes to 25 minutes. Uh, so here is the uh, clinical result after the uh, treatment sessions. Uh, and, you know, sometimes the rosacea can be induced by uh, topical or systemic corticosteroids. And here is a case who responded uh, after the uh, 577 flexus laser. The advantage is that uh, it's a fractional treatment, so we do not treat uh, all the areas, but we treat a small proportion of areas, uh, like 30% or 40%. Uh, so, uh, so, so this way, uh, we, uh, I feel myself very safe, and I know that uh, th there's not going to be a risk of hyperpigmentation or hypopigmentation. Uh, I think uh, there's going to be a pause or coffee break. Then we will keep continuing. Uh, question, please. Thank you, Doctor. My pleasure. Uh, I have uh, three questions. Uh, I have a yellow laser, mm -hmm. other uh, brand. Mm -hmm. I ask you, is there any facial edema? Facial edema uh, after the facial session? Facial edema? Uh, very very slight, actually. You, you can see some facial edema, but it's never prominent. It's very slight. Yes. And it resolves over one or two uh, days. <coughs> and uh, compared with other sort of uh, vascular lasers, like the pulse dye lasers, you do not see the bru bruising. Almost never. Uh, you can see these tiny black crustings, but this will peel off over time without any uh, pigmentary disorder. Uh, another question about the telangiectasia in the nose. Yes. Can I use the scanner mode rather than uh, the no, single pulse? No, no. Actually, in my first applications, uh, I used the scanner mode, but it doesn't work. Uh, because uh, the, the lesions, the telangiectasias on the sides of the nose are mostly uh, thicker than 300 nanometers. So what I use is that, uh, maybe you can see uh, on the device that you can change the scanner uh, with the handpiece, which is a one millimeter applicator, and you will get excellent results. From my experience in, mm -hmm. in my device, mm -hmm. it's more liable for uh, post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation and scar formation if you use the single pulse mode. Yes, but... Uh, uh, because you cannot mm -hmm. predict the ex exact uh, power that you stop, uh, uh, st stop working yes, but on the device. Yes, but change on the device. You cannot predict the, the, exact, uh, uh, the exact power to stop. Mm -hmm. So it is... Uh, I saw uh, that uh, mm -hmm. when I work with the scanner mode is, is better without side effect. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, the scanner mode is somehow more maybe uh, more safe. safe yeah. But on the other side, uh, personally, I didn't see a case of hypo or hyperpigmentation. Okay. Uh, the, the second advantage of the flexus uh, is that uh, you do not cool. But uh, actually, uh, I just forgot to show my video 
Uh, if you use the cooler, uh, then you will disappear the chromophore. Uh, then the blood vessels will get constricted and the oxyhemoglobin will get lesser. So you shouldn't do that, actually, theoretically. Yes, sir. Uh, and this is the only device, actually, with 570, as far as I understand, uh, which doesn't uh, cool and uh, which doesn't have the plates. Because if you use the plates, uh, then you will uh, make some was a constriction. If you use the cooling or integra integrated cooling, uh, then you will constrict the blood vessels. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's go to the next part. Um, and I told you this is uh, very interesting and exciting, so we will not lose any time. Uh, you see, he's getting ready <laughs> for the uh, really hot results that he's going to present. <laughs> and uh, so now the next uh, topic is to combine 1550 and uh, yellow laser, and you will see what's possible with that. So. Up to you. <laughs> Thanks so much, Stefan. Uh, so this is the power of 1550, actually, because, uh, you know, the fractional lasers are either ablative or non-ablative. With the ab ablative lasers, like the CO2 or erbium uh, you have to make some tiny holes. But this will disrupt somehow the melanocytes. Uh, and you can see the post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. But using the 1550, you can also see some hyperpigmentation, but the, the ratio is very low. Uh, and the downtime is much more uh, lower. So there is no extended downtime. Uh, so uh, there are some publications about the acne scars and post-acne erythema uh, about 577 laser. Uh, so uh, here is the result of a patient of mine. Uh, so since we can use uh, 1550 nanometer laser and we can use 577 nanometer laser, for the atrophic acne scars, what I do is that I combine the treatments. And here are the results. So hopefully this one works. Unfortunately, yes, okay. So uh, this gentleman uh, has some ice peak scars. Uh, and he has these uh, dilated sebaceous pores. And this is before the treatment. And after the treatment, we can see that uh, the improvements of the ice peak scars, and we can also see the improvement of the sebaceous uh, gland, the sebaceous pores, the sebaceous pores. And we can see this uh, rejuvenation of the um, wrinkles around the eyes as well. So there are publications about uh, 577 and 1550 nanometers that uh, we can use these treatments for the uh, wrinkles as well and, and improvement of the skin texture. Uh, so here is the result of a patient of mine for the uh, atrophic acne scars. And you know, if the, uh, if the acne scars are very deep, like the rolling scars is in this case, uh, or uh, if it is ice peak scar, uh, then we have to treat more aggressively. Uh, and uh, actually, uh, uh, previously I studied with a fractional CO2 laser, F F FTA approved, and FTA approved radio frequency micro needling. But uh, uh, actually, uh, the, the result, the combination results are much better uh, with 577 and 1550 nanometer. And here is the atrophic acne scars of the uh, rolling, uh, rolling scar, and we can see the achievements uh, after uh, two sessions of 577 and 1550 nanometer. So we can also use the combination treatments for the acne vulgaris, and this is a very nice paper indicating that uh, the authors achieved a very nice result after uh, 1550 nanometer laser. Uh, and they just uh, showed that the sebaceous glands are decreased in size. Uh, after approval of the patients, they just take a biopsy before and after one year, and they just realized that the sebaceous glands are decreased in size. So that's how uh, we can achieve a good result uh, for the acne vulgaris. Uh, so just I want to highlight that how we got get the results for the uh, sebaceous uh, pores, uh, pores on the on this re region, and before treatment and after uh, one treatment. So this is the power of 1550 nanometer laser. Uh, 
Uh, then I will show the uh, videos as well. Uh, and uh, this is a case of mine uh, for active acne. And you know, some of the patients do not want to use isotretinoin because of the systemic uh, effects, side effects. And uh, these are the results of the combined treatment with uh, 577 and 1550 nanometers. Uh, before, uh, we can see these marked uh, inflammatory lesions. And this is the after. Uh, laser result. And this is another case with prominent uh, inflammatory lesions around the cheek, and we can see the imp improvements uh, after the treatment session. Now, this is another case. We can both see the improvements of the acne scars, and we can also see the improvements of the active acne. So, if you want to get some results for both inflammatory acne as well as the atrophic acne scars, we can combine these two treatments. The 15-15 nanometer uh, will help shrink the sebaceous glands, which, which was proven uh, in, in the paper, and we, which we can see now. And 5-7 nanometer will help uh, constriction of the blood vessels and decrease the inflammation. And we can also use for the post-acne erythema as well. Uh, so how about scars? Uh, so in the scars, if we take a biopsy from a scar, uh, we, will uh, we will see the disorganized collagen fibers uh, together with dilated blood vessels. So what we have to do is that uh, we have to constrict the blood vessels and we have to, uh, we have to reorganize the collagen bundle. So that's why uh, there are some papers, but they are mostly about combination of the pulse dye and 15-15 nanometer. But what we do is that uh, I combine 577 nanometer laser because uh, you can well, well appreciate this uh, telangiectatic appearance, the red appearance. If you, if you look with a the dermoscope, then you will see the blood vessels get dilated. And here is the results uh, after three sessions of 577 and uh, 1515. So that's the power of the co uh, combination th therapy. Uh, and there are also papers about 15, 15 nanometer lasers uh, on the uh, improvement of wrinkles and skin texture. And here is a patient of mine. Uh, she had both rosacea uh, as well as the wrinkles, and we can see the de decreased wrinkles as well as improvement of the rosacea. Uh, so, uh, for the melasma, there are papers about 577, and there are papers about 1550. So, why don't we use the combination therapy for the persistent melasma cases? Because we know that if you take a biopsy from a patient of melasma, we can see these dilated blood vessels. And this uh, vascular endothelial growth factor uh, influences the uh, persistent melasma. So, what we, we do with 577 is that uh, we constrict the blood vessels, and using 15-15 nanometer laser, uh, we help uh, these uh, melanin pigments uh, uh, to, uh, to uh, extract from the epidermis. And here is the result of treatment with 5.77 and 15-15 nanometers, and you can see the melasma scores are decreased, and you can see how these uh, pores, dilated pores, are uh, decreased in size. And you can see, also see the improvement of these uh, fine wrinkles around the uh, eyes as well. So the combination therapy works for melasma, works for dilated sebaceous pore, works for atrophic acne scarring, uh, inflammatory acne, uh, and of course uh, for rejuvenation, especially uh, around the uh, eyes or around the uh, mouth. So, so how about the difficult to treat patients? Uh, I'm going to show some uh, examples or some different tough cases. Uh, so you know that uh, we get good result with uh, excimer lights, monochromatic excimer lights, uh, 308 nanometer, and uh, we can just simply at the um, uh, the, uh, uh, the the device. Uh, 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 and we can apply 308 uh, nanometer excimer light treatments. So this was a case uh, in whom we, get, we got good result on the face, but on the uh, groin, uh, there were 
persistent lesion. So this was located on the right groin area, and the lesion was located on the left groin area. Uh, and also, uh, I performed the PRP treatments as well, because it's well documented that platelet rich plasma uh, injections also work uh, by the growth factors as well. And the, the patient is on uh, Exhimer uh, phototherapy. But what I do uh, on the right side is that uh, I performed a 1550 nanometer laser uh, after the informed consent, consent, because uh, there are publications about the use of fractional carbon dioxide laser uh, in addition to Exhimer phototherapy. And by this way, this is the first time actually, this has never been published, but probably will get published, that uh, combining the 1550 nanometer laser uh, together with the Exhimer lights can enhance the uh, clinical efficacy. You know, on the left side is still persistent, a little bit slight developments, but here uh, a prominent clinical outcome uh, with the combine. So we can further uh, combine the 1550 nanometer laser. So how does it work? Uh, according to the literature, it's also used uh, for the androgenetic allocation, and I will show my results as well. Uh, so. Uh, microthermal zones uh, induces uh, WNT signals, and these signals uh, help uh, to restore the uh, root uh, stem cells. And by this way, uh, the melanocytes uh, proliferate, and we can have some additional uh, benefits using the combination therapy. Uh, so this is not a vitiligo, actually. Uh, this is a tough case, difficult case, uh, but I didn't take a biopsy because it was a clear-cut diagnosis. I just looked with a wood slant exam, and it, was, it wasn't a vitiligo, but it was a polyosis-like alopecia areata. Uh, by dermoscopically, there were these velus-like shafts, uh, and uh, there, were, uh, loss of, there was loss of pigmentation. And the patient was persistent to systemic and intralesional corticosteroid treatments, and we know that there are publications about uh, the efficacy of 1550 nanometer, and also uh, Exhimer light treatments for persistent alopecia areata. So we start the treatments, and after a couple of sessions, uh, you can see the uh, good clinical outcome, and the patient, uh, and the treatment is going on, by the way. So for the androgenetic alopecia, if you have the power of 1550, I use almost uh, to every patient of mine. Uh, even I use the minoxidil, uh, even I use the PRP or the other treatments, because there are many publications about 1515. Uh, in this case, uh, I just want to highlight that uh, we can get these uh, good clinical results uh, uh, with um, a 1550 nanometer uh, laser, and we can dermoscopically see that uh, the ratio of uh, anagen hairs are increased. But what is very interesting, what has not been published or, uh, or which has not been uh, showed before is that you can see the increased pigments. Uh, so the whitish hairs are getting darker this way. Uh, because uh, my suggestion, uh, my consideration is that of uh, the WNT6 signals help uh, restore not only the velus shafts to get into the anagen shafts, but also helps to restore the melanocytes. I think that's why it works for the vitiligo as well. Uh, macular amyloidosis, uh, it's a very difficult to diagnose disorder. Uh, it's not very common in, I know, in United States or UK, but it's common in Asian population and in Turkey as well. Uh, we can make a diagnosis, but it's very difficult. It's, in, it's almost impossible to treat. But I just read a paper after confirmation of the diagnosis, histopathologically in this case, that uh, 1550 nanometer may theoretically be used by uh, extraction uh, of the um, uh, amyloid material from upper derms. So that's the result. And I think this is the first in the world that a treatment option uh, helps for the macular amyloidosis because it's a stressful issue. Uh, so you see these uh, pigmented reticular patches. Uh, mainly located on the back and very itchy. So finally, uh, this was a poor patient uh, who had these lesions for three years without a specific diagnosis because no colleague of mine took any biopsy. 
uh, they just tried to freeze, they just tried to, uh, they just tried to cauterize, but it was unsuc unsuccessful. What, what I did was the biopsy, and after the Grokot stain, we identified that it was a, a cutaneous histoplasmosis. So you can see this uh, fungal microorganisms. Uh, so we started with uh, oral uh, antifungal treatments, uh, itraconazole and voriconazole. Uh, just the lesions uh, responded slightly, very slightly. Uh, then we just consulted with the patient that we can give some intravenous sort of antifungal treatment like, like you know, the, uh, the systemic treatments, but the patient refused then. Uh, then we started the uh, 1550 nanometer laser because using these um, microthermal zones, uh, we make a, a coagulation area. And uh, I think this way uh, the treatment helped uh, for uh, improvement of the lesion. The, the patient is, is still on treatment and uh, almost near complete resolution is seen. So we can treat 15, uh, we, we can use 1550 uh, nanometer uh, laser for difficult to treat uh, skin infections like the deep fungal infections or sometimes uh, atypical myc mycobacteria infection. And Swapnil, a friend of mine from India, just demonstrated the, the, uh, the, the use of 1550 nanometer laser laser for atypical, atypical mycobacteria. So uh, the indications will, will grow. Uh, the point is that, uh, I repeat again, I used a, a nice CO2 laser, FDA approved, and, and a nice uh, radio frequency microneedle, but I never saw uh, such an effect for the atrophic acne scars. And if you combine, so you can achieve uh, better results with minimal side effects. Side effects. So what happens uh, after the 15-15 nanometer laser is that uh, the patients experience some redness. So it takes something like three days or five days to disappear, and rarely seven days. But the downtime is much more lower than uh, ablative uh, fractional treatments like erbium yak or CO2. The second is that you can see these black dots again, like in 577, but this will completely heal off. So how about the hyperpigmentation? Of course you can see it. And according to the literature, of course you can see the post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. But the ratio is very low. Uh, it's very low in my personal experience, combined with the CO2 laser. Uh, and uh, uppermost, uh, this sort of pigmentation disappears in one or two months treatment. So what I suggest after the procedure, so it's not written in the uh, maybe, Literature, literature, but uh, I, I advise to use topical azelaic acid cream just to prevent the hyperpigmentation. The other point is that you can see a slight tanning, but it completely uh, dissolves. So, uh, as a dermatologist, as a doctor, uh, we want to feel safe, and I see many patients uh, just come for referral. Uh, previously treated with CO2 lasers and post-inflammatory hyper hyperpigmentation. Uh, previously treated with uh, very nice um, radio frequency microneedling devices, the best ones, with little, very little uh, progress. And you can uh, you can give a gift this progress to your uh, to your patients. And by the way, we have to use the uh, cold air like the Zimmer or other brands uh, during Not the just? process because we make heat, and we have to cool down a little bit uh, to. Uh, avoid some side effects so uh, and, and and to enhance the um, comf comfort of the patients so we have to use the cold air together with the 1550 but with 577 never and 577 do you use a gel yes ultrasound gel uh, without cooling it's yeah. very important not is there a question of course. Uh, do you have any experience about uh, keloid and citriate uh, yes i just citriate uh, yes. treatment yes very nice combination right. treatment yes do you have an experience? Yes, uh, I treated patients with hypertrophic scars, keloids. You know, the hypertrophic scar and keloids are not the same. If you take the biopsies, you see the keloidal eosinophilic uh, glass uh, sort of collagen, but not in hypertrophic scar. But, you know, the treatment is almost the same. And you know that uh, in the histopathology, you see the dilated vessels as well. So that's why we have to use the vascular lasers. Uh, and the same applies for the stria as well. Uh, and according to my experience, it's not shown here, maybe, but uh, the keloid is very difficult to treat. 
but hypertrophic scars very nice, uh, and the stria distance are very nice. I think there, there, there are some papers about the efficacy of 1550 nanometer laser for stria distance. And in any indication for the pulse type, you can use 577, any indica indication. 